anthem that will be familiar to the crowds around Italy in a little under seven weeks from now in the World Cup Finals, the Republic of Ireland World Cup finalists for the very first time and in their penultimate match in Dublin before setting off on that great adventure. Welcome back to Lansdowne Road for the match against the Soviet Union. The Irish team, of course, bears scant resemblance to the team that last went into action against Wales. Seven changes there. Of course, the big talking point, the reintroduction of Gary Waddock five years after he made his last international appearance in the Lenin Stadium in Moscow in a match that was to apparently spell the end of his international career. But back he is now to win his 20th cap, having resolved his injury problems, having had his new English club, Bill Wall, pay back the insurance money that was paid out when Queen's Park Rangers felt his career was over. Waddock's rehabilitation today is complete. The Irish team featuring Paul McGrath in the midfield with the central defensive partnership of Mick McCarthy and David O'Leary. McCarthy's opposite number as captain on the Soviet team is Oleg Kuznetsov, the stopper from Dynamo Kiev who was suspended for the European Championship final and that did the Soviet's chances no good at all against the Dutch. Three new caps in there, the goalkeeper Uvarov, the defender number two Pokin and also the number eight Brushin. So the same problems for Valery Lubarovsky, the Soviet coach, as there are for Jack Charlton at this time, missing key players. That is Igor Belenov, one of four German Bundesliga players in the team, sent off last Saturday playing for Mönchengladbach in Hamburg. His club, Mönchengladbach, have problems in the relegation zone of the German Bundesliga, and Belenov himself has problems. He is facing a charge of alleged shoplifting in Cologne. The referee for this match is from the United States, Alfred Kleinitis. A reciprocal arrangement will mean that an Irish referee, John Purcell, who's on the line today, will have a fixture involving the United States national team to conduct himself. And if I've said John Purcell's on one line, I'll point out that on the other line is Mr. Joe Byrne, another Dublin official, and that pair are brothers-in-law. Much changed Irish team, of course, today. Jack Chart making a virtue out of necessity and pushing into service players who might not otherwise be seen in service in the green shirt. Among them, the two we're looking at at the moment, Niall Quinn and David Kelly, who last played together as Ireland Central Strike Force against Israel. It was Kelly's first match in the green shirt of Ireland, and he scored a hat-trick that night at Daly Mount Park. Would that they could be so fruitful today. Jerry Payton back between the sticks, the first time since he kept goal in the autumn of 88 against Tunisia. He's nets off. Rolled rather long on that. And played forward to Borochuk. McCarthy appeared to handle that. Referee thought so too. And so it's Nuti who's won the free kick for the Soviet Union. Nine is Borochuk. What a tigerishly in. Giving away the throw. It's one of the newcomers, the blonde boy Broshin, but he's left the throw. That was Morris who went in hard. The referee didn't like it. The free kick been awarded for his challenge on Belenov. Free kick to the visitors. And Newty, the tall striker, has gone to the edge of the box. Warwick, though, heads it away. It's come to Fokin. Quinn is the covering Irishman. Townsend's head to Warwick. And played towards Quinn. But Fokin is back. The ball has gone out. And it's a throw to the Soviet Union. Kuznetsov. And Sigmantovic. Three centre halves in the Soviet team and a sweeper. It does give a degree of fluidity to their lineup. 
at the back that they can switch and interchange. As Jerry Payton last saw service at the start of the 88-89 season, when Bucky Bonner was injured, he kept goal against Northern Ireland in Belfast, and then against Tunisia here. Went out of one four now. That's Quinn on to Kelly. And put out of play by Zygmuntovic. First Irish attack. Paul McGrath. Back towards Wallach. Crowded out of it by Golukovic. And the goalkeeper in a mess. And that's behind. Well, interestingly, the Soviets have not attempted to give their new goalkeeper, Alexander Uvarov, an early touch of the ball. And when it did fall to him, when Golukovic played it back, they got into a terrible tangle. Warwick stole it from them, but he was unable to find a way to put it across the goal. And in fact, it went out off the upright. And now it's Uvarov with the goal kick. Staunton. It's Kuznetsov. And Quinn, a judge to have fouled him. We kick to the Soviet Union. Staunton clearing it. Across comes Hidi Atulin. In goes Shidi. Nice return from Quinn. Shidi, but Kelly hadn't read the intention. Because Netsov tidying it up. Thrown to Kiriatulin, now active in the French League with Toulouse. Five foreign based players in this Soviet team, an indication of changed times. Four of them play in the German Bundesliga, two in the first division, Mönchengladbach and Dortmund, and two in the second with Schalke. Kiriatulin, Broschin, And out for Gorlukovic to take the throw. Borojuk, Gorlukovic, in came McCarthy. Kiriatulin stayed back to that sweeper. Kelly's on him. And he was taking no chances with an inexperienced goalkeeper. Bahis, Kiriatulin. Vastly experienced international at the age of 31. Almost 60 caps for the Soviet Union. There he is again. Sheedy went in on him. The ball hasn't gone out. Staunton kept it in play. Then Sheedy. Nice little triangle there by the Irish. And now it's Quinn holding off Kudnetsov. Sheedy couldn't dig it out of the sand. Kiriatulin. Played on for Belenov. O'Leary's gone with him. McCarthy. And McGrath with the clearance. Sheedy against Fokin. Throw to the Soviet Union. Kevin Sheedy presented with his statuette for 25 international appearances before the match. Totally reached to the game against Wales. Staunton's head, and there's no trouble to McCarthy here. Chris Morris. The one area in which there was no Irishman. Broshin. Luty. Broshin once more. Facing McGrath. And now Golukovic. No trouble to O'Leary. Quinn. Kuznetsov, Soviet captain. Broshin. Warwick missed the tackle. Broshin once more. Borochuk. Pokin. Certainly a, a willingness to take the game to the Irish on the part of the Soviet Union. There's, of course, on the fringe of first choice selection on their side, too, key to make an impression with Lobanovsky, the manager. That's in towards Luty. But he was a judge to have. Impeded Chris Morris, and the free kick has been awarded.
Rashidi. Staunton. Kuznetsov. Another for Keane. Townsend stood his ground well. It's McCarthy. Oh, he showed rather too much of that to the opponent. Townsend had to retrieve the situation for him. Imposing himself in the situation. Staunton forward for Sheedy. Sheedy crowded out of it. Throw to Ireland. Staunton, Kuznetsov, not able to get ahead of Niall Quinn. Living in ahead of Staunton. Throw to Ireland. Steve Taunton, the Liverpool representative and a depleted representation of the Irish squad. The referee saw that as having touched a, a white clad leg last. Throw to Ireland. Staunton for Quinn. That's not quite was intent, what was intended. Goal kick Soviet Union. Steve Staunton made the left-back position his own. This is his 10th international appearance. Still only 21 years of age. Well, it's certainly been a brighter opening for the 40,000-plus in Lansdowne Road than they had a month ago against Wales. Alexander Uvarov, first appearance between the posts for the Soviet Union. Very much the third choice goalkeeper Renat Dasayev who plays in Seville as the number one Viktor Chanov the number two and he's on the bench today testing out the younger man Kuznetsov and Belenov is after this and the early ball played in toward UT Peyton saw the danger Igor Belenov and Jerry Peyton Roisin, what if was ever with him, and Morris had rather left his position. McCarthy had seen that he had a spot of filling in to do. Now this is Niall Quinn, spread wide for Townsend, laid back for Staunton. Plenty to aim at, but for the second time, Steve Staunton Finding it impossible to deliver the cross that was required. minutes of the contest gone uh, Republic of Ireland nil Soviet Union nil O'Leary firmly forward McGrath and Townsend dwelt rather too long on that Tyshenko got in now it's Borojuk played for Broshin facing Morris and Staunton with Tyshenko in attendance putting it away and it's a corner Andy Townsend, meanwhile, is on the deck. And Andy Townsend in need of attention. To take a knock in the last build-up, and McBurn being called on to administer to the Norwich City midfielder. Townsend. Come on, Sharp! making his ninth appearance for Ireland since being called in at Daily Mount 14 months ago when McCool, the Irish mascot, hadn't even been for him. Well, 
and a pull of the Irish basket in Italy, encouraging Townsend to get back on his feet, which he does. And Brosheen takes the corner, which Quinn clears. Sheedy. David Kelly. Unable to control the bouncing ball. Soviet throw. Liuti. McCarthy in total command. Jerry Payton asking for the return and getting it. Pushed by Townsend on Borojuk. State of the parties in the 14th minute. Celine, the sweeper, hasn't really gone anywhere. Now Kuznetsov plays in the Soviet way as the centre half who attacks the ball. Stopper, this fellow behind him at all times. Joaquin is the right full back. Gorlukovic is the left full back. And they have Zygmantovic as well as a central defender. Tyshenko, McCarthy misjudged that, but retrieved his own error. McGrath, Staunton. Kudiatulin and Quinn in chase. The Soviet defender showing plenty of experience there. The ball had gone out of play. Goal kick is what results. That was the typical attitude of the well-versed defender in such a situation let the ball do the work and out it went in the end and again a poor dead ball kick by the goalkeeper Quinn's touch letting him down because that's up falling over and the referee convinced by the tumble that that was a free kick. And now Manchester City centre forward Niall Quinn. His international career also rejuvenated by the move from Arsenal to Manchester City. Chidi, Quinn, Kiriev to lean, and Kuznetsov between them shutting off the middle. A meaty kick into the breeze. Click on, not finding its intended target. Shouldn't forget, of course, that seven changes from the team that played against Wales. This is very much a scratch Irish side. Players hoping to make it into Jack Charlton's 22 for Italy out to impress, but the cohesive element that's in place when the first 11's in action, obviously lacking at this early stage. Sheedy, Townsend, and Staunton. It's got a fraction too long. Way out was blocked by Tyshenko. Sheedy wants more. A line ball for David Kelly. He did well to dig the cross out. Kuznetsov, Bokin now on the ball. Kuznetsov and the goalkeeper. Short admiral will compose of the big Soviet defender. And in the meantime, McCarthy had fouled Borochuk. And that meant a free kick to the USSR. Nearly 
stood his ground as Quinn played for Warwick. Roshin did well. Tyshenko. Kuznetsov. So Leary. Zygmuntovic. Threading it through to Liuti. Played on towards Brosheen. Brosheen's cross deflected by Morris and Peyton was in the right place. Chris Morris caught rather out of position there. Liuti fed Brosheen. Retrieved the situation sufficiently to take the sting out of the attempted cross. and McCarthy sending it back to Peyton. Quinn against Kuznetsov, Kishenko, Brosheen. Fouling Morris, good decision by the American referee. Just gave him a little nudge, sufficient to knock him out of his stride and let the ball get too far away. But the referee, Alfred Kleinitis from the United States, alive to that little ruse on the part of the Soviet. Free kick to the Irish. Lagra is on the edge of the box. McCarthy has several, as well as McGrath-Ueva. One of them, Quinn, down for Sheedy. Deflected away by Fokin for a fourth. And the Lansdowne roll begins. Now, set pieces like this with a six foot four inch centre forward, you've got an ample target in which to aim. If they mark him, they might leave a gap somewhere else. Niall Quinn hovering near the edge of the penalty area as Waddock takes the corner. But in the end, it was not what was required. Now, Morris. Kelly on towards Quinn. Ashidi. Ashidi blocked by Fokin. That was better Irish play. The other end, McCarthy against UT. Solid and dependable as ever, Mick McCarthy, and he extracted himself from that way. Staunton put out by Tyshenko. And that's Gorlukovic. minutes gone, no goals at Lansdowne Road. Townsend. Kuznetsov up in the air, Kelly unable to connect, and that was a foul by Tyshenko on Kelly. And Townsend takes the free kick quickly. Staunton. Well, that, it has to be said, is the third occasion in which Stephen Staunton has sought an option that, in the end, proved ill-advised. Normally so reliable, the Irish left back, particularly when going forward. What resulted there, as before, a goal kick. Now let's see if Uvarov has any more success with this one. Finally finding his range. Belanov. Tyshenko, Fokin. Gorlukovic and Kuznetsov. Gorlukovic once more. They really are very good at keeping possession when they want to. You have the impression that if this team got in front, it would be very hard to get back at it. Tyshenko. Well, Andy Townsend taking matters into his own hands, determined to get the ball back. Succeeding, winning the free kick, nonetheless. Off Valeri Tyshenko. Chris Morris. Kelly, 
and out for the throw. Maybe worth recalling that it is an Irish strategy to play the ball from the back into the corners. The fullbacks have been attempting to do that, but the two front players, not regular players, Kelly and Quinn, maybe not quite adjusted themselves to Jack Charlton's pattern of play. Nonetheless, Ireland have a throw. Mick McCarthy to take it. And the roar goes up again. Aimed at Quinn. And Quinn adjusts to a foul the goalkeeper who was stranded in no man's land. He, it seemed, had decided to assume the role of centre half. And uh, took a little nudge off Niall Quinn, which brought the free kick. Shenko was fouling him. And O'Leary with a free kick. Towards Quinn. And the grab made to Shenko. Here's Kelly. Somehow they got it away. But a free kick has been awarded to Ireland. Has it? No, it's offside, in fact, it's been awarded. The uh, tardy arrival. Mr. Clyde-Itis is right hand in the air, suggesting that in fact it was awarded a free kick to Ireland. For what it was difficult to discern, but in fact it was offside that had been spotted by Joe Byrne, the linesman of the far side. McCarthy. Cleared by Morris. Kelly did well there. Taking the responsibility, then feeding Quinn. Kelly and Sheedy in the middle, support coming from Waddock. And Waddock dispossessed by the arrival back of Rasheen. Still the Irish battling tigerishly on. Rasheen Kuznets off away from his station. And Morris nearly won it back. The crowd appreciated that. Twenty-five minutes gone. Ireland nil, Soviet Union nil. And behind this Irish team, 18 matches unbeaten in the city of Dublin, 16 of them at this venue in Lansdowne Road. An international record that bears comparison with, well, anyone anywhere else. Sigmantovic, Roshin, and Borodjuk, Olukovic, Roshin, Tyshenko, times it. McGrath holding off Tyshenko, Warwick, and Kelly. Back for Chris Morris, forward again for Kelly. It's looking better. Waddock, Kelly, Morris, the old, old failing, that makes yet another wasted opportunity, another full-back cross gone awry. That's the way we are, just approaching the half hour at Lansdowne Road. No really clear cut scoring opportunities, but uh, Soviet team playing precision football and an Irish team with typical fire attempting to disrupt them. Kelly, handle the ball.
No, oh, well, Kelly was the judge to handle the ball. He felt that uh, he'd been the victim of shirt pulling. Music to the ears of Jack Charlton and his management team on the bench. Perhaps music to the ears of the team as well. We certainly need any lift they can get. We learned one thing from the match against Wales, that the supporters have as much a part to play in raising the performance of the team in difficult circumstances. The men of the picks themselves. Lukovic. Sheedy. That's looking for Kelly. He's pulled his marker Zygmantovic out of the middle. But he's still the lone ranger as far as the Irish are concerned. And another opportunity goes astray. Zygmantovic, McCarthy there first, Kylian Tulin, put under pressure by Kevin Sheedy, but he was always in command of the situation. Joaquin, Kylian Tulin, through Kelly's challenge, and that's played for the on-rushing Borojuk. The idea was sound. David O'Leary saw the danger coming from a long way away. <laughs> Cut out by Tyshenko. Gorlukovic, Broshin. Beaten by McGrath, Townsend for Morris. Again played for Kelly to chase. Kidia Tulin come out of the middle. And that's a throw to the Soviet Union. Morris. In goes McGrath, cleared by Kuznetsov. special thrown towards Quinn it was the head of Tyshenko that got there first the ball didn't go out to the corner it went to the throw and again Mick McCarthy can attempt the long one and memories go back to Hanover from his throw Ronnie Whelan scored on this occasion there's no Ronnie Whelan in the team but he can deliver them into the danger zone from this position Again towards Quinn. Can he try to get in? Kubarov was brave. Soviet intransigence that decreed he should not pass. Another set piece for the Irish to attempt to exploit when Quinn has reached the penalty area, which he has now. McCarthy. Again aimed towards Quinn, and he got there. Kiri Atulin sending it away. Townsend to try and knock it back. Wins in behind them, there's no offside. But the presence of Kiri Atulin and Pukin ensured that there was to be no way through. 
throw to Ireland. Stolted on the ball. As we look back at Quinn's last effort, but two Russians too many around him. Nothing coming of the last Irish attack. And a free kick for the Soviet Union has resulted. Let's off. Morochuk. Time's end. Who's let's off? Molyerly beating UT. What a for Kelly to chase. Covering player was Zygmantovic. Ireland's throw. Warwick. Morris. Warwick. Blocked by Borodjuk. And another Mick McCarthy special. Goalkeeper again coming a long way. He did get the fist to it. Staunton's won it back. Through towards Sheedy. But offside had been signalled against Kevin Sheedy. Free kick to the Soviet Union. Sergei Fokin, the Soviet fullback, making his first appearance. as is the goalkeeper, Alexander Uvarov. <laughs> Off the head of Beauty, bounced safely away for a goal kick. Which would have been the outcome. Had he not touched it at all. Right off the head of Fokin. Come on, eh? Staunton with the throw. Kuznetsov got in the way, but now here's Townsend. Shidi. Going in towards Kelly. Zygmantovic, it's forward from McGrath. Quinn round the back. Kuznetsov, though, saw the danger coming and cut it out. That was better by the Irish, but Kuznetsov, very aware of just where Niall Quinn was. Zygmantovic found that he'd only played it straight to McGrath, but Kuznetsov showing all his experience there to tidy it up for the Soviet Union. Shiri. Staunton's free kick, was Netsov beating Quinn. McGrath, Quinn once more. Townsend forced to attempt to retrieve and doing so well. Quinn back to Staunton. Sheedy and Kelly in that quarter. Townsend won it back, Sheedy. Townsend again, but that's rebounded to Borodjuk. Taking on McGrath. 
and playing it straight to O'Leary. Sheedy, fouled by Belenov. Five minutes to half time, still Republic of Ireland nil, Soviet Union nil. Staunton's free kick, McGrath looking it on, McGrath again. The defender arrived just too quickly to enable him to fire in the shot. In the end, he tried to make something of the opportunity, but there was nothing for it. He chip it forward, and nobody was able to respond quickly enough. against Kelly. <laughs> Kelly has done exceptionally well here. Now Townsend for Kelly again. And there's Kelly's cross, and here's Quinn, and he couldn't connect. Well, David Kelly created that opportunity through persistence. And Niall Quinn's finishing let him down. Really great play by Kelly here. Zygmantovic totally discommoded. A teasing little cross. Quinn coming in at the back post, but he just couldn't stretch himself to put it beyond the stranded keeper. Ireland's best opportunity that coming a little under four minutes from half time. Yeah, to lean. Staunton didn't make contact. Irish throw. Quinn. His nets off. Belenov looking for Koshenko. No danger here. Brosheen. Sheedy aiming for Kelly. Laid down for Quinn. Tyshenko got there first. Kokin. Staunton beating Belenov. Out. Throw to be taken by Borodjo. Beauty. She did the sensible thing. Morris, McGrath. Machine. Offside against Belenov. But he felt he timed his run to perfection. Very well played by Borodjuk to release him, but the Irish defence had it well worked out. On by McGrath. Into the final minute of the half, O'Leary plays it long. Zygmantovic away and then got it off handling the ball. Shidi taking the free kick quickly. A foul by Kelly on Zikantovic. That's a free kick to the Irish, to the Soviet Union for the Irish indiscretion. It's been a half that has uh, offered a few talking points, certainly. The best Irish chance by far falling to Niall Quinn after David Kelly had 
shown admirable persistence to create the opening. The Soviets adopting a style that will be all too familiar to the Irish when they get as far as the World Cup finals in Italy. And it's a style with which they'll have to come to terms. They've come to terms with it in so far as they haven't conceded anything in this first half, but they might have scored through Niall Quinn. As it was, that clear-cut opportunity came to nothing. And so at half-time at Landstein Road, it's Republic of Ireland nil, Soviet Union nil. Party of 15 arrived in Dublin. Kishenko arrived yesterday to augment the initial squad of 14. Both managers persisting with what they sent into the fray at the start of the contest. And this is Kilia Tulin. Now the Soviets picking up very definitely where they left off. Zygmantovic. And a little bubble off the pitch beat McCarthy there. Groshin. Kishenko. Fouled by McCarthy. Free kick to the Soviets. This is Kuznetsov, the Soviet captain. The opportunity to send one long in the direction of Peyton's goal. And again, a little deflection there. The form of goalkeeper who kept a clean sheet against Barnsley on Saturday in Division Two in England. Maintains it here. Quinn. Losing out to Pokin. Offside side against the UT. O'Leary. Quinn against Kuznetsov. The deflection there off Kishenko, but in fact the whistle had sounded. And the Soviet Union have a free kick. It's Kishenko who missed kicks, which appeared to put pressure on the Soviet defence. Quinn on Kuznetsov, but the whistle, as you see, had gone there, so it wouldn't have counted at all. Kuznetsov was fouled by Niall Quinn. McCarthy. Irish ball. Morris. Quinn and Kelly together, now it's Water. Played for Morris to attempt to cross it, and that was a better looking cross from Chris Morris. And on this occasion, it was Tyshenko's body that got in the way and knocked it away for a corner. Good bright start to the second half. A better looking cross from Chris Morris. And Ireland of a corner. Taken by Sheedy, McCarthy at the near post. And Quinn got sucked in just too far there. McCarthy's little flick on. The Soviets survived the danger. McGrath. This time it's Fokin to play it back to Uvarov. Sigmantovic. Borojuk. He was fouled by Staunton. That's a free kick to the Soviet Union. Sergei Fokin, debutant today. CSKA, the Soviet Army team in Moscow. A free kick. Tyshenko up. Oh, and Peyton seems so nonchalant there. And had to go full length to save it. 
was a real booming free kick from Fogin into the box. Peyton thought about going, and then when he decided it wasn't his, he seemed rather slow to get back. Tyshenko met it firmly and lobbed it over him, and he had to go full length to save it. Well, he ultimately did what was required, but perhaps lost his place just a little. Belenov. And this is Wallach. Quinn. For Morris. Kelly against Kiriatulin. Was he bundled off it? The referee didn't see it like that. Kiriatulin clearing. McGrath sending it back. Kuznetsov. And this time, free kick awarded for the challenge of Chris Morris. On Valeri Roshin. Thornton, Kelly, now McGrath, Borlukovic, is Wadok putting pressure on him, McCarthy back towards Wadok, Borlukovic putting it out of play. Again, the cheer goes up for Mick McCarthy's attempt at the long throw. Goes Kishenko, that's what up. Townsend tried to get in. The Soviets tried to clear. Once again, Mick McCarthy. McGrath almost got a touch. Kelly went in on the goalkeeper, but Ivarov stood his ground. Much a case of what might have been there. It was aimed at Paul McGrath. He very nearly got a touch, but in the end, it went straight into the arms of the keeper. Morris with a firm header forward. Joaquin tidying it up. to attempt to get it back. McCarthy against Luty. Nice little touch by McGrath. And let's find its way to Quinn. Staunton. Kelly still looking busy in a great run and so too with McGrath. Wouldn't come down for him. Kishenko. Borojuk. And now Golukovic. Tyshenko. Borojuk. Broshin. All the avenues of opportunity and attack closed off. Takes a bad ball from Kilia to lean. Give Ireland back the possession and then scrappy exchange. It rebounds off Gary Warwick and out. A poor one that time from Zygmuntovic. McCarthy's long ball. Kilia to lean. Fouled by Quinn.
the tenth minute of the second half. Ireland nil, USSR nil, but lands down road. attempted to put it out Sigmantovic tidied the rest of it up and now it's Kuznetsov Morris is there first still in play for Wadok and McGrath showing great determination but in fact free kick has been awarded and the free kick is awarded against Paul McGrath for the way in which he won that back An interpretation in the American referee in the crowd here. Did he show his foot too high? Well, six to one and half a dozen the other there. He did come in blindsided because that's off, but the referee saw it as a foul. Now it's Wada. And Zygmantovic bumbling David Kelly off the playing area, giving Ireland a free kick. He's been peppering the Soviet penalty area with long throws. Now is to attempt something similar with the boot from the free kick. Mick McCarthy. The keeper right outside his area. And he might well have been outside the area when he made contact. The referee and linesman didn't see it as such. And McGrath, Kelly, on towards Sheedy. Coquine winning it back. There's a bit of passion about this friendly. McGrath. Quinn this time to jump. Kidia to lead. Gorlukovic. Roshin. Unable to get round Warwick's challenge. Kelly. Again. The wrong end of a firm challenge. Gorlukovic. Felt the linesman's flag should have been raised. didn't raise the flag because it wasn't a throw at all it was a free kick now it's Warwick it's time to go Lukovic putting it out of play for a throw in Borussia Dortmund defender presenting Mick McCarthy with another opportunity and there's the roar to Willis on its way towards Ivanov's net McCarthy's throw, a lower trajectory this time. Sheedy couldn't connect. There were enough white shirts back there to block the passage of the ball towards the goal. But now it's Stolten towards Quinn. Played back to Stolten by Zygmantovic. The deep cross. And Ivan off the trouble. And Stephen Stolten very nearly contriving a goal out of the most unlikely of circumstances. Suddenly the Irish have found a bit of passion and fire. Stolton attempting the cross from the way he was looking, but it hung on the breeze and curled, and Ovarov was a tendency to leave his line. Happy to see it whistle past the upright. And maybe that's a tactic that could be employed to useful effect. But the Soviet goalkeeper does tend to move a long way from his six-yard area. McCarthy, meanwhile, has conceded a free kick. The official attendance at today's game was 43,000. Now, off goes Quinn. And 43,000 fans give voice to their emotions, believing that perhaps this phase of the game, Ireland's best, might yet yield a goal. Quinn, Andy Townsend. Still battling on. Looked like a handball, and that's how the referee saw it. Now, was it inside the area? But he says no. 
I don't think there was much doubt about that being a handball. The only question there can be, was it inside the area? McGrath beginning the attack. Andy Townsend at the end of this flick from Quinn. Out came Tyshenko. He was outside the area. Fair enough, referee. But what a position for the Irish. The Soviets and everybody inside their penalty area, as big a wall as you'll ever see. Seven in it. Stolton and Townsend together. Seven men protecting the new cap goalkeeper. Stolton, it's there! And Stephen Stolton separates his tenth appearance in the green shirt with his very first goal for his country. A brilliantly contrived free kick, a over the wall, around the tallest man in it, and into the corner of the net that Uvarov had not guarded. As sweet as a nut from the Dundalk lad, and it's Ireland one, Soviet Union nil, right on the hour. Luty, the tallest man in the wall, was guarding supposedly Uvarov's top right hand corner but that was precisely where Stolten put the ball and the net was unguarded and that is 1-0 brilliant Stephen Stolten and a goal the Irish richly deserve on their performance in the opening quarter hour of the second half Stephen Stolten's first for his country and after a shaky enough first half for the Liverpool defender that a goal he'll cherish he'll treasure for many a long year. Stephen Stolton won the Soviet Union nil. Now it's Quinn. On this occasion the ball had gone out and it's a goal kick. And that's to certainly ease the tension down there. McBurn offering words of encouragement as ever from the bench and I'm sure they're delighted but certainly the Irish did begin the second half with more passion and venom than they concluded the first and that has encouraged the first chorus of the song that used to be Dara's days but belongs now to the Lansdowne Road terraces his nets off Quinn, McGrath, and it's now Borujuk, Gidiatulin losing to Townsend, Sheedy and Stolten has some room here, and the two strikers are further ahead, one of them Kelly, and Kelly has done well here against Zygmantovic, the defender it has to be said did equally well in retrieving the situation, and now the Soviets who have only attacked sporadically have to show if they carry any real threat. Belenov's cross, Chris Morris's head, and Brushin unable to get on the end of that because of the attentions of Mick McCarthy. Side in Hamburg at the weekend. Similar disappointments in Lansdowne Road for him, although he's still on the pitch. Let us not forget, there are 27 minutes of this game to run, and the margin is just a single goal. Morris clearing it. Tyshenko. Back again by Zygmantovic, firmly headed away by Mick McCarthy. Shidi. Stolten, no trouble really. Well, the celebrations were a long time in coming against Wales. We saw on that day how the goal can waken up the crowd. Let's hope they maintain their full voiced support for the remainder of this game. And who knows, we might get another. David O'Leary. Doing exactly what's required. Really, 
Dave's had quite enough time in this game. So dominant has been Mick McCarthy throughout. But anything he's had to do, he's done superbly. Foul by Tyshenko on McGrath. An Irish free kick. Maybe another Mick McCarthy special. Soviets lined up on the 18-yard line. But the breeze in this second half has freshened and is certainly blowing in behind Irish attacks. Dave O'Leary holding station in the centre circle. McCarthy thumping it long towards Quinn. And we saw pushing on Kuznetsov there. Tyshenko. Kiliatolin and Tyshenko displaying mutual misunderstanding. It has found its way to Borodjuk. Morris winning it back. Just the ball to play to Sheedy. One at wide in the right. Two in the middle for him as ever. Morris going in the overlap. One up towards Sheedy. Sheedy rolled for Townsend. Brilliant stop by Ovarov. Great play from both sides. Cross coming in from Staunton. The fist of Ovarov. Now it's Morris. Tempted the keeper again. But just a little too low on the trajectory from Chris Morris. But the keeper has certainly kept the Soviets in the game here. Kevin Sheedy set it up superbly for Townsend. The shot was precisionly and driven superbly. But Uvarov did well. It's a great save. The first occasion in the match that Ireland have really managed to open up the Soviet defence to such an extent that one of the strikers had the opportunity to fire in a shot like that. And full credit to Kevin Sheedy for holding it up and opening the way for Townsend to deliver that telling strike that could so easily have brought number two. Coming in the 22nd minute of the second half. Well, Andy Townsend went in there with all guns blazing. And I feel that the Soviet is really perhaps making a little more of that than it was worth. It was a clumsy challenge rather than a malicious challenge I felt by Andy Townsend. Watch as he comes in here with his foot up, no question. As the Soviet Borodjuk goes for the ball, he caught Lutey high on the thigh, and Lutey is still down. The site of the injury appears to have shifted somewhat to the knee. Surprisingly, Newty restored. Player who got the winner against Holland last month, having come on as a sub. Another effort from him today would be greatly received, I'm sure, in Soviet quarters. Out of David Kelly for a corner. We've just arrived home for tea. I can tell you that it's the 24th minute of the second half at Lansdowne Road. And you've missed a superbly struck free kick by Stephen Staunton, which will no doubt be replayed over and over again. But it's the difference between the sides, coming right on the hour. After the goalkeeper, the Soviet goalkeeper, had handled outside the box. And that's the way it stands at this moment. As Broshin takes the corner and crippled in the Irish defence, which Sheedy eventually resolves. Broshin once again. Sheedy out there, doing a defensive job well. Borodjuk, cleared by Morris. Kelly will chase after this. Kiriatolin, back to Uvarov. Author of that outstanding save from Andy Townsend as well. They will be happy to take the sting out of the proceedings, these Soviets. 
Now the slot tire is with him. Starts and long, cut out by Kiria Tulin. Now Kelly laid off to McGrath. Quinn, the one touch football by Irish in the highest order. Kelly! Not too sure if he knew too much about that. But he'd still have been glad to claim it had it been a goal. It was beautiful one touch play. Kelly, McGrath, on oh. towards Quinn. Quinn over the top. Kelly going in on it. And as the challenge came on him, it was rather a block by David Kelly rather than a shot. It's a long way wide in the end. And the change in the Soviet team. Lutis knocked from Townsend, perhaps a little more serious than we suggested it might have been. He goes off and they send off, send on Yuri Savichev of Torpedo Moscow. Straightforward substitution, Savichev, like Uti, is a striker. And he's early into the action. David O'Leary with him. And wins the goal kick. Goal kicks from Jerry Payton. Now it's Niall Quinn. Townsend had made the run for him. And Quinn returns the compliment. Joaquin with him. Laid back for Staunton. Staunton towards Kelly. Kiriatulin is there. And that's a free kick. Sheedy, Staunton, Bogeen, putting pressure on Gorlukovic. to superb international defender stood his ground and offered Townsend nothing but that again was a great ball by Sheedy this is from Staunton towards Niall Quinn and it's gone for the goal kick and Ireland about to make the first substitution Chris Hewton will come on and Chris Morris will make way for him and a round of applause for one of the great old veterans of this Irish team. Not Chris Morris, I hasten to add. He would appear to have an injury. The ice pack being administered to the groin as he leaves the field. So Chris Hewton goes on. Preventative measure. And that's his 47th international appearance. The Tottenham Hotspur defender. A loyal servant of Irish soccer. And on with 17 minutes of the contest remaining. Now Sheedy, and his passage blocked by Kuznetsov. And the nature of that constituted a foul. Free kick. Kevin Sheedy has certainly blossomed since the interval. And on that occasion, he 
he was blossoming too much for the liking of Oleg Kuznetsov, the Soviet captain. Shidi himself will take the free kick. Kubarov showing anything but a safe pair of hands. The tendency of goalkeepers from the continent of Europe to punch a ball away. And that particular European goalkeeper not too concerned where it ends up. Gary Warrock with a, a wind-blown corner flag. Now that is not allowed. That is not within the rules. A corner flag is part of the furniture of the pitch and you've got to put up with it, even if it does blow in your face. Well, this is a novelty. One of the great old servants of Irish soccer holds the flag for Chris Warwick, for Gary Warwick rather, to take the kick. That gentleman's moment of glory, one of the stewards at Lansdowne Road since time began, or soccer internationals anyway, began here. And he's, after all these years, got into the action. Oh, McCarthy's made a mistake here. And Peyton, happy to see that effort from the substitute Sevichev. Whistle passed. A rare, rare error from Mick McCarthy giving Savicev the chance. And as we watch that whistle away unthreateningly, we acknowledge the arrival on the pitch of Fedor Cherenko, Spartak Moscow, the Soviet Union's current footballer of the year. And a man of whom the Irish do not have fond memories he scored in the World Cup match in Moscow in 1985. And Staunton, seeing it out of play, throw to the Soviet Union. And Kevin Moran is about to make his entrance. And David O'Leary is the player who is going to come off. And arguably one of Dublin football's most popular sons is going to replace David O'Leary. No less popular himself, but he appears to have a, a hamstring twinge. Mick Burns suggesting he goes straight to the dressing room with it. O'Leary perhaps wants to see the rest of the action from the bench but Kevin Moran is on 13 minutes to go to resume his partnership with Mick McCarthy at the heart of the Irish defence that was not for Kelly but it's gone through to Ovaro Yatulin, Kuznetsov, Cherenkov, Bukin, and Moran standing his ground, and that's a free kick to Ireland. And it's significant that uh, the Soviet substitute, Fedor Cherenkov, involved in that, was making the point back in November, October 85. Which was Gary Waddock's last match for Ireland. Cherenkov got the first goal, the goal that opened the way to a 2 0 defeat and an exit from the 1986 World Cup for the Republic of Ireland. Here's Cherenkov again. This time it's time to Can he kind of get in around the back? Kiliatolin finding a way back to Umarov. A missed kick by Kidia to lead, and he fouled Gary Waddock. A rare, rare 
error on the part of the so dependable Soviet sweeper, Vahis Kidiatulin. They were playing their old keep ball game. On this occasion, he messed it up and tripped Gary Water. And we will recall that Stephen Staunton, right on the hour, curled one from a not dissimilar position into the top corner of the net. Now, this is perhaps asking a lot, but he did signal to Kevin Moran that he would like Kevin to take up an offensive position. So the Soviets have Stephen Staunton's proven prowess at the dead ball kick to worry about, and they have the threatening presence of Quinn Kelly and now Moran as well. Lined up there, the three of them, towards the far side of the box. Andy Townsend, the player, with Stephen Staunton. And it's rolled for Staunton again. This time Obarov showing a clean pair of hands. For Lukovic. And back from McCarthy to Payton. Well, the current shout around the ground is for another of the substitutes on the bench to be brought into the fray. But whether or not Jack Charlton responds to the chance of the crowd for Packy Packy Bonner is quite another matter. There he is, just poking his head out of the far end and showing no signs that he might be about to be called into action. Might find its way to Townsend. Indeed it does. Now McGrath, Quinn in support, played in towards Sheedy, who's offside. Can't have been much in it. There cannot have been much in it. He has played in towards Kevin Sheedy. Ah, perhaps it was David Kelly in the middle which is the problem. But close enough call. Challenge on the Soviet there, which has given a free kick to the Soviet Union. Well, Chris Hewton has to go the requisite distance away, so too must the left back take the kick from the correct position. So Lukovic once more, followed by Hewton. Cherenko, cut out by McGrath, clearance completed by McCarthy. Chidi. Free kick this time against the Soviet, Savicek. Seven minutes to go at Lansdowne Road. Ireland lead the Soviet Union by a goal to nil. Superbly struck free kick by Stephen Staunton. After 60 minutes of the match. And it stays like this till the end. It'll be exactly what the doctor ordered for a team preparing for its first in the World Cup Finals. Notable scalp would be that of the Soviet Union. Here's McCarthy with a long throw. Quinn was being held. And uh, an indication there that in modern day football, the attacker gets nothing, and the defender gets a lot, if there's an element of doubt. But Niall Quinn was being restrained in the manner of a nightclub bouncer. Go on, Niall. Make him give a 
rather firmly struck and the pitch itself is bone like and the bounce deceived Jerry Payton and has given the Soviets an opportunity that their recent play has not really earned them well enough for the corner what a oh, chance here for the substitute Savichev Joaquin headed away by Quinn. Up the head of Gorlukovic. And McGrath thumping it away. So time for the utmost concentration on the Irish side. Gorlukovic. Cherenko. Up and away by Moran. Because Nets up was fouled by David Kelly. Uh, another referee might well have interpreted that the other way, that the Soviet player went in too low with his head. He's a tall lad, taller than David Kelly, and Kelly wasn't exactly indulging in a bicycle kick. But Alfred Kleinitis of the, of the United States saw it as an infringement by the Irishman, David Kelly, a worrying moment for Jerry Payton is what ensues. That ball just inside the penalty area. It's an indirect free kick. Goes nets off the skipper there. Belenov is number 11. Kiviatoli number 4. Three most experienced Soviet players. Kiviatoli's shot lacked conviction. Goes nets off was completely miscued. And Hutton is able to clear. Zygmantovic last man back. Rokin and the keeper Ovarov. Five minutes to go, less than five minutes to go. In fact, it's three minutes to go. And the Soviet Union in. Trail Ireland by a goal to nil. And casting an eye back through the Soviet's recent record, you have to go back until the start of this season in October to note the Soviet's last reverse. That was when they went down 2-1 in Berlin. That's the side net. Commentator's nightmare, isn't it? Just when you're about to wrap it up, Igor Belenov. And receipt of a beautiful ball by Zavichev, which turned more and drilled in the shot. But Peyton had his angles right. So to resume on the Soviet statistics, they last lost a game in the World Cup qualifying group that included East Germany. That was their penultimate game in Group 3. They were ultimately to qualify along with Austria. But the East Germans beat them 2-1. And that was their only defeat in the qualifying group. And it's not since then have they lost a match. But they're within a minute and a half and losing one here. Card for David Kelly. Yellow card for David Kelly. And the yellow cards. the keeper as well Tiny went Kelly went in on him Kelly pulled him back and then the keeper clipped him around the ear well I can only 
assume out of that, since Kelly did nothing on toward, that the card that appeared to have been shown to him may not have been shown to him at all. But certainly the goalkeeper was booked, having had a free kick awarded to him. Game is now in its final minute. Now it's Townsend. Sheedy started on the overlap. Kelly not tall enough. Cherenkov and Paul McGrath's foot was high. And the seconds are ticking away. Tell us that now 45 minutes have elapsed and we're into stoppage time. Alfred Kleinitis is adding on and there can't be much of that. Precious little in fact. The ball has gone for the goal kick to Ireland. But I would suggest that the Soviets' last chance has gone. And that would continue a remarkable sequence for this Irish team. Yet another Dublin victory about to be achieved. And now it is. And that is a most notable scalp to add to the many that have already been achieved in this stadium since Jack Charlton has taken charge of the Irish team. A superbly struck free kick in 60 minutes from Stephen Staunton, the only goal of the afternoon, but a most encouraging second half display for the Irish, fully meriting their 1-0 victory, and the Soviet Union beaten here, which means that the Irish winning sequence in Lansdowne Road is now extended. It's 17 unbeaten in a row in this stadium, 19 unbeaten in a row in Dublin. And I should think that Jack Charlton is most encouraged by that performance, particularly in the second half. 43,990 were in the stadium to see this. Mick McCarthy outstanding at the back in his dual role as centre half and captain of this team. But after a lacklustre first half in which uh, our panel, John Giles and Ray Tracy, quite rightly complained of the lack of incident about which to talk. I think things were redressed in the second half with plenty to talk about, with that magnificent goal from Steve Staunton, an outstanding shot from Andy Townsend, saved by Uvarov. But this is the goal that decided the match, over the wall and into the top corner, precision personified, and Steve Staunton making his 10th international appearance for the Republic of Ireland, scoring his very first international goal. A goal that has secured Ireland's third victory over the Soviet Union in eight meetings. A goal that sets Ireland up for their last friendly in Lansdowne Road before departing for the World Cup. That against Finland. Liam Brady's testimonial next month in the best of spirits. Jack Charlton's record now. Played 35, 120. That's not bad. And in Dublin, there have been 14 victories in 20 starts. And that is the 23rd occasion on which a Jack Charlton managed team has kept a clean sheet, which is a testament itself to a defence so superbly organised. One of the great centre halves of football history would certainly take a great deal of pleasure out of that. Valery Lomanovsky been in charge of the Soviet team since three weeks before the 1986 World Cup Finals. That is 14th defeat in 75 international matches but a performance of the highest quality in the second half even if the first half was somewhat lackluster but the end result what matters the end result is what will be remembered and the end result is a victory to Ireland and it could well have been 2-0 Andy Townsend shot brilliantly saved by Uvarov but a second goal was not to come. The only one was coming from Steve Staunton. That on the hour, giving us a final score that we can celebrate tonight. Republic of Ireland won, the Soviet Union nil.